A football Friday live right here on the early line on Sports Grid. Not just a college football recap. We're setting the stage for the weekend mm. in CFB. We are less than a week away from the start of Ooh. the National Football League season. That would be a week from last night inside Arrowhead Stadium between the Chiefs and the Ravens. It's an AFC Championship game rematch. KC won that game, won its second Super Bowl in the that same amount of years. It's third Lombardi Trophy in the last five seasons, and KC enters 2024 as a co-favorite to make it three in a row. Who are they alongside? That would be the San Francisco 49ers. Both teams booked at a 6-1 to one number in a long off-season drama. Circulating San Francisco with wide receiver Brandon Ayuk has now officially reached its destination. Ayuk will remain by the bay with a very large new contract, signing a four-year, $120 million deal yesterday with the 49ers, $30 million per year, one of six wideouts now in the $30 million club around the National Football League. DRS, the offseason timeline is too confusing to even try to detail here for Brandon Ayuk, but he was unhappy. He requested a trade officially. He was reaching out to his former college teammate, Jaden Daniels, from their days together at Arizona State, saying, love what you guys are doing with the commanders. He was a hold in at camp for the 49ers, but was trying to get the deal done. It is now a done deal. What is your reaction? All roads led to this. And if you're following along here on the early line, we told you multiple times. Brandon Ayuk is probably going to wind up being a 49er because why? It was in the best interest of Brandon Ayuk and also the San Francisco 49ers. Just had to work out those details. I wasn't buying into, oh, no, C.D. Lamb and, J and Justin Jefferson getting these big deals. There's no way they can sign him because here's what was going to happen. He wasn't going to play this season. Like, he was going to hold out. It's either A, you traded him or paid him here. And once we saw the tea leaves, Ben, about what, three to four weeks ago, where it's like, okay, we got deals in place with the Washington Commanders, with the New England Patriots, with the Pittsburgh Steelers, and with the Cleveland Browns. Pick one of those teams. We like the compensation back, and apparently they're going to pay you the money that you're worth. But also thinking back, mm. the 49ers are a smart organization. Go out there, find what you're worth. We don't have to trade you if we don't want to. And if those four teams work out contracts, we'll then measure measure those contracts up against what we have and see if we can come to an agreement. Now, the interesting part overall in this negotiation process, which I know Adam Schefter was a little bit salty yesterday by saying this deal has been around since August the 10th. We have nothing has changed. He just waited three weeks. So part of me goes, man, that's a smart man because there's not a single football player on this earth from playing peewee football, middle school football, high school football, college or pros. That's like, you know what? Camp is finally here. This is so exciting. Shout out to the guys that can make money and miss all of that practice time. Now, granted, you want to be honing your skills, getting in with the boys, getting your work and getting ready for the season, but nobody likes camp. So Brandon, I got everything he wanted and miss training camp. That sounds like the biggest win of all time right now, Ben. Yeah, it certainly is. And again, we talked about this DRS in terms of the overall prospect for Brandon Ayuk. If he was demanding too much money, maybe some around the NFL, maybe even some in Northern California would have said, listen, man, you're not to the pantheon that is Justin Jefferson or CeeDee Lamb, yeah. your fellow first round wideouts from the 2020 NFL draft. But we got to push back on that narrative, especially in the last year and a half where Brendan Ayuk has been that top target as a wide receiver for Brock Purdy. The other bit of that argument is probably the idea that San Francisco has so many offensive pieces, but yet Ayuk still remains that top target for the quarterback of the future in San Francisco, mm -hmm. Brock Purdy. Last year, more than 1,300 receiving yards. In his first year fully with Purdy. In 2022, more than 1,100 receiving yards. Brendan Ayuk is a darn good wide receiver and now compensated as so. Again, six wideouts now in the National Football League. Make $30 million per year or more as Brendan Ayuk joins the $30 million club. It's so big, and it needed to happen because now you can start to concentrate on football. We talk about Trent Williams. You know, he needs to get back into the fold. I, I think he will, but actually, Trent Williams does have a history of holding out. I don't remember the one year, Ben, I think, with yeah. the Commanders. He was supposed to get like a $12 million base but took so many fines and only got paid like $100,000 for the season. So maybe he might be dug in a little bit more than other players. But Brandon Ayuk is a perfect fit for this offense. And as you pointed out, 
it's not so much that Brock Purdy can't survive without Brandon Ayuk, but they fit so well as a team, and it's his favorite target. Why would you upset the apple cart here when you're heading into a season where you expect to get back to a Super Bowl and win it this season? And also keep in mind from depth purposes. Let's just say they let Brandon Ayuk go, trade him for a first-round pick, but you didn't get that compensation to be able to use for this year. Debo Samuel is a mm-hmm. great wide receiver, but Debo Samuel plays a position at wide receiver that's almost like a running back. So let's just say, you know, he gets clipped a little bit here, misses two to three weeks. Now you don't have Ayuk either. That offense doesn't look so good at this point. When this offense is firing, it's perfect. Good offensive line. Unbelievable tailback. Wide receiver position that has the medium guy, the deep guy, and also the superstar tight end. You didn't want to upset that for the season. From an Eagles fan perspective and saying, you know what, I wish he would have got traded away, but that's not how we look at it here. Optimistically, yeah. handicapping-wise, great move for the Niners. No more question marks. Get your left tackle in camp, and I deserve that money. Otherwise, he would have been traded away. This was a big component to that team that they got back, and they're better for it now. San Francisco, a short favorite to win the NFC Championship this year at 3-1. to one. Detroit and Philadelphia tied for the second best price at plus 550, but it's nearly double that number of the 49ers. And what we know about San Francisco, that is always the expectation by the Bay. They have played in four of the last five NFC Championship games to Super Bowl appearances in the last half decade. But whether it was Kyle Shanahan or well before him, San Francisco, we don't give the same slack, and rightfully so, that we do to the Dallas Cowboys, or the same flack, I should say. We give San True. Francisco yeah. more slack because the 49ers' last Lombardi Trophy, 1994. In the 30 years since that point, the Niners have reached eight NFC Championship games. They have played in three Super Bowls, but they have not taken home another Super Bowl ring. That is the expectation. And oh, by the way, not sure for whatever reason necessarily, but some market movement here in the final few days before 2024 begins. Kansas City now the shortest price to win Super Bowl 59 at plus 550, half a buck in front of the Niners. It is crazy when you bring that up, right? Because Dallas does take a lot of flack because Americans team, more eyeballs, richest franchise in the history of sport. But there's one thing about getting there, like the Buffalo Bills in the 1990s. Like, hey, say what you want. Yeah, they didn't win a Super Bowl, but they went to four straight. They were a quality football team that was showing up to the big game, but just not performing well in that big game. The Dallas Cowboys never even get to that big game. But the 49ers, you're right. Multiple Super Bowl chances, a lot of NFC championship games. I thought they would win the Super Bowl last year and haven't. So you're right. It's a talented roster that should really be getting that oomph from the fan base that says, you know what? Yeah, yeah. It's fun and we're talented, but we were used to winning championship after championship in the 1980s and the early 1990s. What happened to this franchise? We'll see if that turns around this year. But also keep in mind, it's very hard when you get to the Super Bowl and lose it, man. That next season, everybody's gunning for you. Everybody wants more money, apparently. And next year, your quarterback's going to want even more. But pound for, for sure. pound, one of the best football teams in the NFL no doubt about it you got to make those signs right now you got to get those deals done because Brock Purdy is due for a very large payday and when you had Mr. Irrelevant at his very inexpensive rookie deal for the last three years including what is going to be 2024 it's going to look very different in 2025 and beyond Purdy did play in the final two preseason games by the way for the 49ers Did not look great in either, an interception in both, and not a touchdown pass in those two preseason Mm. outings, but a lot to be determined. Trent Williams is now the focus for San Francisco. The 49ers in week number one will host Aaron Rodgers and the New York Jets to end out the week, of course, at home in Santa Clara as Aaron Rodgers returns to Northern California. As I track down the line for that game, now just a a three-and-a-half-point spread in favor of the 49ers. 44-and-a-half is the total. Donnie, did you notice that on the FanDuel Sportsbook, Game Green is now the favorite to win the AFC East? I I think, uh, honestly, it's correct. That's the way it actually should be before this season starts. So I do agree with the FanDuel Hmm. Sportsbook. Smart people over there, huh?